Frank Sesno coming to you from the Planet Forward Studios at the George Washington University in the heart of Washington, D.C., talking today to Harry Shearer, who is the filmmaker, the writer, and the creator of The Big Uneasy. It's a documentary that looks hard at New Orleans and, and what went on there. And So how would such a funny guy like Harry Shearer, who's been known for so many things, from Spinal Tap to The Simpsons, get involved in such a serious, weighty project as this? Aliens invaded my body. Uh, no, I'm, you know, most funny people are very dark, serious guys underneath, or guys or gals underneath. And uh, uh, this, you know, as I say, I live in New Orleans. I care about the city deeply. Um, and I just got, because I had the good fortune to not have any damage in my home, I had the time and energy available that other people were wasting on dealing with insurance companies and contractors to uh, learn about this stuff. The central premise of your film is that the levees didn't hold because they weren't properly engineered. The pumps didn't work because they were riddled with failure that people knew about well before Katrina. Mm -hmm. Well, the pumps is the current situation. That's not looking backward. The pumps are in the new improved system, and the whistleblower inside the core says they have design defects. They will not work. The investigators, the two investigators, the, the three people in the film, the whistleblower and the two investigators, the two investigators said, these design defects over four and a half decades designed into this by bad decisions by the Corps caused the flooding of New Orleans. There's also a thing called Mr. Go, mm -hmm. which is the, the, this channel that was built for shipping yes. to, make, to put a straight line, but ended up being a funnel into the city. What? For water. For the flood, for the storm surge. For, for the, the storm government. surge. Yeah. Making the problem even worse. Yeah. The dumbest thing of all, in retrospect, uh, was to build Mr. Go, which is a 75 mile long ditch. Not only is it allowing a straight route for shipping to go in and out of there, it also allows a straight route for the tide to come in and bring salt water way up into town. It's a process of hiding the risks. And in this case, the, the risks included the fact that people died uh, who didn't have to die. So what do you think that you <clears throat> and the rest of us can learn from this disaster in New Orleans that would help drive smart growth or growth that is going to take into account the changes that we're seeing around the world today. Well, I think what the experts that I interviewed in the film all seem to point to is that human engineering that doesn't mimic natural processes, that doesn't, to the greatest extent possible, try to mimic what nature already does and take advantage of what nature already does, is doomed. And as nature changes, human structures and processes that are static and straight line in a curvy dynamic world are not a good recipe for long-term Do you have success. any doubt that nature is changing? No, but nature always changes. Nature always changes, so we have to adapt and evolve yeah. with that. That's right. In your film, what's really interesting is you talk to the Dutch. Yeah. Because the folks in New Orleans said, oh, there's a city that's dealing with water. There's, there's a country, country that's dealing with water and has for hundreds of years. Yes. What are the Dutch telling us? What do you conclude from what the Dutch are doing that could be a lesson for us going forward? Well, David Wagoner, who's an architect in New Orleans, has held three of these so-called Dutch dialogues. And the Dutch have come down, Dutch engineers, hydrologists, planners have come down and, and in three workshops said, here's a vision of a city that could exist in a much more natural relationship with water. Any city or New Orleans city or theirs? They did New Orleans. They came to New Orleans and said, look, here's a vision of New Orleans not having a war with water, but learning to live with water. These could be coastal cities pretty much anywhere, It right? could be cities having any relationship with water. My, my attention was drawn recently in the Mississippi River news to the story of Napa, California, where the mayor uh, apparently rebuffed the Corps' offer to core up his river and said, no, we're going to do something else. We're going to move development back off the floodplain, let the river expand, uh, enjoy the water during the good times, and have a place for water to be stored and drained during the bad times, which is basically the Dutch approach. In your work on this film and in thinking about, and in all the learning that you did mm -hmm. that went along with it, presumably, and in thinking about what coastal communities all over may be facing with respect to climate change, what struck you or surprised you the most? John Barry, the author of Rising Tide, is in my film, and he, he talks about people saying, you know, outside New Orleans, saying, climate change, give up, forget about it, the city's done. And he says the following, 
New Orleans is built on a marsh. A marsh is a, an organic area. If you resupply the marsh with enough fresh water and sediment, it will grow. And it will grow up to a level where it's above the new rising sea level. It can do that. It's a dynamic organic, as opposed to New York City, which is on a rock, which can't go anywhere when sea level rises. I think that's surprising not only to me, but to anybody who, who is just sort of, uh, as a, as a uh, knee-jerk reaction, said, well, city with sea level problems, they should give it up. So you think the innovation is to go back to the way it was in terms of re restoring these wetlands? And I mean, the, the reason to go back to restore the wetlands is because they are nature's buffers against hurricane winds and storm surge. There's a formula that Ivor Van Heerden offers in the film. I don't remember the exact numbers, but for every mile of wetlands, there's a distinct and uh, exact reduction in the amount of wind and storm surge velocity that is directed at a city like New Orleans. That's nature's storm protection at work. One of the problems in this society is we still don't have a way of giving a dollar figure to the services that natural systems provide us. And because we don't have a dollar figure in the society, we value it at zero. And in cost-benefit ratios, therefore, the benefit of a natural system is on the books at zero. Well, the film is The Big Uneasy. Thanks for sitting and chatting about Thank it you. for a few minutes. Really enjoyed it. If you got uh, questions or comments for Harry Shearer, for us, planetforward.org. We're also interested in what's happening in your communities, especially if you're in a coastal community and you have ideas about biological models that might apply to your communities as we grow and adapt to this changing planet.